Oh, praise to the most high God. Uh, tonight's topic is called Easter is of the devil. Tonight's topic is called Easter is of the devil. Okay, let's open up with the book of Acts. Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Let's start there. Acts 12, verse 1. The book of Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Come on. Now about that time, Herod, the king, stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. So now it says, about that time, Herod the king, Herod, who's Herod? Okay, who's Herod? Hold it. Give me the book of Luke chapter 1. Luke 1, verse 5. Luke 1 and 5, okay? Luke chapter 1 and verse 5. Uh, Brother Hegai, I need you to get to me the definition of Herod, okay? Um, I do me. Get me the definition of Herod. Um, I do me in the Zondervan Bible Dictionary and send it out. Read that for me. Luke chapter 1 verse 5. Come on. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. So now it says, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea. Herod, the king of Judea. Okay. So why was Herod the king of Judea? Why was Herod the king of Judea? Because during the time when Christ was born, the, with the time when Christ was going to be born, guess what? No king of Judah or Israel would be ruling in the land. That's why Herod was the king. And who set him up? Rome set him up. You understand? Give me that in First Maccabees chapter 8, verse 13. First Maccabees 8, verse 1. Let's start there. 8, verse 1, then we're going to jump. First Maccabees chapter 8. Um, let me know when you got it. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. First Maccabees 8 verse 1. Read it. First Maccabees chapter 8 verse 1. Come now on. Judas had heard of the fame of the Romans, that they were mighty and valiant men, and such as would love mm -hmm. to accept all that joined themselves unto them, and make a league of enmity with all that came unto them. So now, at this time, Rome was coming into power. You understand? Rome was coming into power. So when they came into power, they set people up. Jump down to verse 13. Watch this. First Maccabees chapter 8, verse 13. Also Great. that whom they would help to a kingdom, those reign. And whom again they it ruled. Those that they help to a kingdom, they rule. And also whom they would help to a kingdom, those reign. So whoever Rome set up they became, they were in power. Nobody would, was set up in Rome if, what, what it was, if Rome didn't have a say so. Including our forefathers, the Scots and Pharisees, they were set up by Rome. Including Edomites, they also were set up by Rome. You understand? So now, guess what? Rome set up their own and they set up all the coons of our people that were pushing everything that Rome was pushing upon us. So here it says, and also that whom they would help to a kingdom, those reigned. Herod was one of them. Herod, Herod was set up by Rome. Okay, come on. And whom again they would, they displaced. Mm -hmm. Finally, that they were greatly exalted. So now, now, let's go back to Luke 1 and 5. Okay, read Luke chapter 1 verse 5. Luke chapter 1 verse 5. Come on. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Okay, so now Herod was the king of Judea. Who set Herod up? Rome set Herod up. You understand? They set him up. So now what I want to show you is, uh, Brother Haggai sent me the picture. Okay, so let's see. Who's Herod? Okay, let's find out who Herod is. Let me share my screen real quick. One second. Okay, here we go. Let's see who Herod is. Who was Herod? Okay. Okay, so read Luke chapter 1, verse 5 again for me. Because remember, Rome set, set Herod up, you understand, as the king of Judea. Now let's see who Herod is. Read that. Read Luke chapter 1, verse 5 again. Luke chapter 1, verse 5. Come on. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, mm -hmm. a certain priest named Zacharias 
of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. So Herod was the king of Judea. Let's see who Herod was. So now you're going to read that. Read that what you see there. Um, this is from the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. What page are you reading from? Page 224. Herod, Idumean rulers of Palestine, 47 BC to AD 79. Come on. Line started with Antipater, whom Julius Caesar made procurator of Judea procurator. in 47 BC. Uh -huh. You see that thing? It says Line started with Antipater, whom Julius Caesar made procurator of Judea in 47 BC. So what you are seeing here is this, this Herod that we're reading about here, these are his forefathers here. You understand? Herod the Great, the first procurator of Galilee, the king of the Jews, 37 to, 80 to uh, 4 AD. You see that thing? So this is what you see in here. We are reading about his father. You understand? Who set him up? Rome set him up as the king of Judea. Okay? Now, go back to the book of Acts. Okay? You know what? I believe he sent me Idumia, right? Did you send me Idumia? Yes, sir. Okay, hold on a second. Let me get Idumia. Because it says Herod was Idumian rulers of Palestine. Idumia. Let's see who, who's the It says Herod was an Idumian. Okay. Let me share my screen once again. All right. One second. Okay, read that for me. Reading from the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, page 239. Idumia. Come on. Pertaining to Edom. Mm -hmm. Greek and Roman name Pertaining for Edom. Edom. Come on. Greek and Roman name for Edom. So Idumia is the Romans, the Greeks and the Romans. That today they call themselves Americans, they call themselves Europeans, they call themselves Russians, they call themselves the French, the Portuguese. You understand? But all of these that today they call themselves Europeans, these are the Greeks and Romans. The Bible calls them Idumia. You understand? Edom. Esau, Edom. That's their, that's their forefathers. Okay? Now watch this. Let's go back to Acts chapter 12, verse 1 now. Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Let's see that. Acts 12 and 1. And 1. Come on. Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Now about that Wait. time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. He says, Herod stretched forth his hand. Who's Herod? Herod was an Idumean ruler of Palestine who Rome set him up. To also what? He was also the king of Judea. Because when he says Palestine, he's giving you the location, remember, because Palestinians, they took over the land of Israel, you understand, before white people came into that land in 1948 in these last days. You understand? So he's making reference to the land of Jerusalem, the land of Israel. So read that again, verse 1. Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. So well, now we discover that Herod was an Ituri, a Roman, a so-called white man today. You understand? And Rome set him up when Rome took him, came into power. So his forefathers that came before him, guess what? He's coming out of the same lineage of his forefathers that he became the king of Judea. He says he became what? He started to what? To vex certain of the church. Who was the church? Because we went over this when I was explaining this to the sisters. Now give me that in Acts 7 verse 38. Let's see who the church is. He says, he began to vex certain of the church. Read that. Acts chapter 7 verse 38. Come this on. is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai and with our father who received the lively oracles to give unto us. So now, they says, this is he that was in the church in the wilderness. Who was in the wilderness with Moses? You understand? Who was in the wilderness with Moses? Read verse 37 so we understand. Come on. Acts chapter 7, verse 37. This is that Moses, which said unto the children of Israel, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall he hear. 
So he's prophesying about Christ. He's quoting Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15 and 18. So it says, this is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel. Jump down to verse 38. He's going to tell you who the children of Israel are in verse 38. Come on. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. With the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai. And with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. So now what we're reading here is. Um, here, this is Stephen speaking. He is going over the history of the Israelites. You understand? So he is explaining to us who was in the wilderness with Moses. He is called the church. So the church is the 12 tribes of Israel. Anybody else outside of the 12 tribes of Israel, they are not the church. You understand? The only church in the Bible is the 12 tribes of Israel. The so called Bantu, Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. We make up the church in the Bible. We are the only congregation in the Bible. Okay? So let's go back. Acts chapter 12. Read verse 1 again. Acts chapter 12 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to back certain of the church. So now what Herod was doing is, remember Herod is an Idumean, was a Roman, a so-called white man. You understand? They were vexing the, the Israelites, the apostles and the followers of Christ. You understand? So guess what? Herod, when they started to vex the church, they started to vex the Israelites. Guess what? We, whose example were they following? Give me the book of Acts chapter 8 verse 1. Watch this. Acts chapter 8 verse 1. Because before the Romans can join in, in can start to vex the church, guess who started first to vex the Israelites? Those that followed Christ. You understand? After Christ died, those that were, those ones were being taught by the apostles. Watch this. Acts chapter 8 verse 1. Read that. Acts chapter 8 verse 1. And Saul Wait. was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was mm -hmm. a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. There was a great persecution against the church, which was, which was at Jerusalem. Here Saul is talking about the apostle Paul. Before he became the apostle Paul, he was Saul. And he was persecuting the church at the command of who? The scribes and the Pharisees at that time. Read. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Mm -hmm. Jump down to verse 3. Come on. Verse 3. As for Saul, mm -hmm. he made havoc of the church, entering into every house. You see that thing? He says he made, he made havoc of the church. He was persecuting the followers of Christ. Killing them, committing many to prison. You understand? Delivering them to the to be persecuted by who? The scribes and Pharisees. Go ahead. Entering into every house and hailing men and women, committed them to prison. You see what was going on? So who was actually persecuting the church at the first? Our forefathers, our people during the time of Rome. Black people, Israelites. They are the ones that started to vex the church. To persecute the church. It wasn't the white man at first. The white man started to join in. When he saw that the Jews. Was already persecuting their own people. Isn't that the same thing that's going on today? When you see many of us. The, 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 the example of that is who? The example of that today. Is your TDJ. Kreplodola. Bushiri. Mboro. Because what are they doing? They are teaching white supremacy. And they speak against us. As we teach they say no. What we teach in hate, we must teach the message of love. We are teaching the message of love. But we're teaching the message of love to our people, the children of Israel, because that's what the Most High God commanded us to do. You understand? So guess what? It's going to come a time where the, the, the other nations are going to start to join in on it. You understand? So what happened back then, it surely will happen again. So pay attention. You men and women up in here. Pay close attention because we are in those in these we are in the last days. And guess what? There's going to be much persecution of the church. Understand that. Okay, give me the book of Acts. Give me Acts real quick. Give me Acts chapter 13. And verse. Give me Acts 14, verse 22. Watch this. Acts chapter 14, verse 22. Go ahead. Confirming the souls of the disciples. And exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that mm. we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. 
Do you see that part right there? It says confirming the souls of the disciples. That's what they're doing right now with these classes and the council that we have. It says exhorting them to continue in the faith. So not only must you come in the faith, meaning you come into this too. You didn't know nothing about this. You've been to, to church all your life. When you come into this truth, you are learning new things. The Lord is saying, yes, you come into the faith, but don't just come into the faith and go back into the scale. Don't go back to the bonds. It says you must continue in the faith, meaning continue to keep the laws of God. Continue to celebrate Passover, not Easter. Continue to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of uh, Dedication, the Memorial of Blowing of Trumpets, and so on and so forth. It says we must continue in the faith of Christ. Wait. Really? That we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. We must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Meaning what? It's not going to be easy. The kingdom is not going to be given to us on a silver platter. That's what we need to understand. There's going to be a lot of persecution. There's going to be a lot of, many of our people, they are going to betray us. Understand that. It happened back then. It will happen today in these last days. Understand that thing. So that's why I want you, brothers and sisters, to be rooted in this Bible, to study, to apply, to attend the class. Take notes. Study when you're by yourself. Go over the class based on the notes that you took in class. You understand? Listen to the classes that we put online. You know, convert them to MP3. Go to SoundCloud, because we have an account on SoundCloud where you can download the classes in MP3. You listen to them when you go to work, when you come back from work. While you are at work, if you are able to listen to music and so forth. Why? You want to make sure that you stay in the spirit. Because we are in the last days. Don't be focusing on entertainment and all that. You understand? You are not watching. You are not preparing yourself for the, for the distraction that comes. We must prepare ourselves. Okay? Go back to Acts chapter 12 now. Acts 12. Read verse 1 again. Acts chapter 12 verse 1. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands. To vex certain of the church. Mm -hmm. To vex certain of the church. So Herod joined in because before that in Acts 8, who was doing it? Saul, before he was the Apostle Paul, and many of the Israelites that were what? That were working with the scribes and Pharisees to what? To kill, to commit to prison, many of the followers of Christ. You understand? Go ahead. And he kills James, the brother of John with the sword. You see that thing? He started to kill the Apostle James. He killed the Apostle James, the brother of who? The brother of, um, he says he killed the, the brother of John with the sword. He was one of the top apostles. Okay, come on. And because he saw it pleased the Jews. You see that part right there? Because he saw that it pleased the Jews. Because remember, those that hated Christ, those that hated Christ's teaching, and those that hated the apostles that followed Christ, guess what? They were pleased when the, the true followers of Christ were being killed. It happened back then, it will happen today. Already, you see, already seeing black Christians, they are already doing what? They are already making documentary to go at documentaries to go against this truth. You understand? They are already doing that. They call them modern, they call them apologetics. You understand? Apologetics meaning what? They teach the that the, the doctrine they teach is to apologize. It's an apologetic type of doctrine that they teach to, so that they don't make the oppressor uncomfortable. I get Christianity is designed not to make the oppressor uncomfortable. Christianity is designed to push white supremacy. So when we teach the Bible according to the way it's written, they say we teach hate. You see that thing? That's why it says it pleased the Jews. When Herod saw that it pleased the Jews when he was killing, their followers of Christ and so forth, is that the Jews was pleased with that. Today is going to be some of your mothers, your fathers, you understand? Because now your, your, your fathers or your mothers, your uncles, they're going to turn on you because you're coming into the truth. Oh no, you're about that Bible now. you about that life. Oh please. You don't celebrate Easter. Ah, come on, what is wrong with you? That's what they, that's how it starts. Before you know it, they're going to want you, they're going to want you to, to be separated from them. Some of you, you're going to be kicked out of your houses by your own mother, by your own father, by your own auntie. And say, I don't want to hear that Bible stuff. It's going to happen. Understand that thing. Okay, read that again. Verse 3. Acts chapter 12, verse 3. Go ahead. 
And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were mm -hmm. the days of unleavened bread. So he proceeded to take the Apostle Peter because the Apostle Peter was the head apostle. He took the Apostle Peter. He says, then were the days of unleavened bread. Because guess what? We were observing the day, we were observing the feast of unleavened bread. Let's read about that, the feast of unleavened bread. Give me the book of Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Leviticus 23, okay. Leviticus 23, let's start at verse 4. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 4. Come on. These are the feasts of the Lord. These are the feasts of the Lord. Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, goes into God's high holy day that he ordained for us to observe. And when you read the whole chapter, you're not going to find Easter. You're not going to find Good Friday. You're not going to find Ash Wednesday. You're not going to find Christmas. No birthday, Mother's Day, Father's Day. Valentine's Day, you're not going to find none of that garbage up in you. The most that God is giving us the ceremonial laws, what to celebrate in the land of our captivity even when we go back to our land. Read that again, verse 4. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 4. These are the feasts mm -hmm. of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. We shall proclaim them in their, actually, their proper seasons. You understand? Watch this. Read on. In the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Read that again, verse 5. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 5. In the 14th day of the first month mm -hmm. at even is the Lord's Passover. He says, in the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Okay, go ahead. Watch this. And on the 15th day of the same month Come is on. the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. Leviticus 23, read verse 5, verse 5 and 6. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 5. Mm -hmm. In the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. And on the 15th day of the same month, is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Come Seven on. days you must eat unleavened bread. So now what we're reading here it says what? It says, and on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. This is what we're reading right here. This is the second high holy day that God gave. The Passover is the second high holy day that God gave us. You understand? So now, I just want to unpack this a little bit. It says, in the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Because I know some of you are new. You don't know how we count the days. How we count the days of the month. Yeah. How we know is the first day of the month. Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 1. Deuteronomy 16 and verse 1. The Passover happens on the first month of the year. The beginning of the year, the first month of the year, guess what? On the 14th day, that's when we observe the feast of the Passover. But we need to understand the feast of the, the how the month, how do we tell the beginning of the month? Okay? Deuteronomy 16, verse 1. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verse 1. Observe the month of Abib Come on. and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Abib, the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. So now the month of Abib, the month of Abib, that's when we observe the feast of the Passover. Abib. So Abib is the name that was given to the month, the first month of the year, the first month of the year during the time when we came out of, after we came out of Egypt, long after we came out of Egypt. You understand? The other nations, they started to do what? They started to give names to the month of the year. But we never had names for the month of the year. We just gave it month one, month two, the first month, the second month, the third month, and so forth. That's why Genesis 1, it says the evening and the morning was the first day. The evening and the morning was the second day. We never gave names to the months of the year or the days of the week. We never done that. The other nations, they are the ones that started to do that. But we never gave names to these days, nor the months. Okay? So read that again, verse 1. 
the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verse 1. Observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of mm -hmm. Abib, the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. So now the Passover happens on the first month of the year. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in um, Exodus 12, Exodus chapter 12, verse 1. Let's deal with that. Because Moses, he taught us when, how do we tell the beginning of the first of, of the month? How we tell the beginning of the month? Moses taught us that. Give me that in Exodus 12, verse 1. We're going to read down. Come on. The book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 1. Read. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. Come on. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Mm -hmm. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Is Israel. This month, hold on. Verse 2 again. Verse 2 again. The book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 2. This month shall be unto Read. you the beginning of months. It shall be the first mm -hmm. month of the year to you. It says, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So Moses was looking at what? Give me that in Ecclesiastes as in the Apocrypha chapter 43. It says, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. Okay? Read that. Strong chapter 43. Um, read verse 8. Start with 7. Because the month is making reference what the word month comes from the word moon. So let's read that first. Surah 43, Surah verse 6, we're going to read down. Surah 43 verse 6, we're going to read all the way through verse 8. Come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 43, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Made the moon also to serve in a season for a declaration of times Come on. and a sign of the world. So now the moon was made on the fourth day. Okay, come on. From the moon is the sign of feasts, a light that decreases in her perfection. A light that decreases in her perfection. So when the, when the moon decreases in her perfection, I think when the moon is perfect is when the moon is full. Right now when you look outside, you see the moon is almost about to be full, which we're approaching the beginning of the first day of the month. You understand? So now it says, from the moon is the sign of feast because we use the moon to calculate our high our high holy days when we observe the feast days that the Lord gave unto us. It says it is a light that decreases in her perfection. As it decreases, we are able to calculate when we observe the high holy days, the date, you understand, with which we observe these high holy days that God gave us, that we read about in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Go ahead. The month is called after her name. Stop right there. The month is called after her name. So the word month comes from the word moon. The word month comes from the word moon. Go ahead. Increasing wonderfully in her changing. Because the moon goes through cycles. It says increasing wonderfully in her changing. The moon goes through cycles. Okay, come on. Being an instrument of the armies above. Shining in the firmament of heaven. So now, what we're reading here is the, the word month comes from the word moon. So go back to Exodus 12, read verse 2 again. The book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 2. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first mm -hmm. month of the year to you. So now just replace the word month with the word moon. Read that again, verse 2. The book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 2. Mm -hmm. This moon shall be unto you the beginning of moons. Right. It shall be the first moon of the year to you. You see that thing? This moon, meaning this month, shall be unto you the beginning of moons. The beginning of many moons or months that will come. Guess what? The Moses is teaching us, listen, when you look at this moon right here, this is how you want to tell the beginning of your month. Right now, the moon that he was looking at was the moon that marks the beginning of the year, which is the first month of the year. We tell by the moon that, okay, it is the beginning of the month. But this particular one right here was the beginning of the year. You understand? So when was the moon, the moon created? Get that in Genesis 1. 
Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. Let's see what the moon looked like when it was created. Okay, so we understand what the full moon actually looked like because what the white man has taught about the black man and the black woman is that the full moon is the, is the black moon. They say the full moon is when the moon is black. No, 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 no. They say the new moon is the black moon. No. The new moon is the full moon. Let's prove that. Genesis 1 verse 14. Read that. The book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 14. And God said, Come on. Let there be light in the firmament of, heaven, of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let mm -hmm. them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So it's going to be for signs, for seasons, meaning to observe the seasonal feast day, and for days and for years, because years are determined by month. Okay, go ahead. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. Right. And God made two great lights, mm -hmm. the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser Look light the to rule the night. Which is the moon. Go ahead. He made the stars also. So on the fourth day of creation, the most high God, he made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day, which is the sun, and the lesser light to rule the night, which is the moon. He says he made the stars also. So now, what we understand is that this is when the moon was, this is the, the day when the moon was created. The fourth day of creation. This is when the moon was new. Because it was not new and it was black. He says, what? Let them be for light in the firmament of heaven to, make, to give light upon the earth and it was so. He says, he made two great lights. You see that thing? So the moon, the day, the first, the, the day when the moon was created, it was full, which is the day it was new. It was a full moon. You understand? So go back to Exodus 12 now, verse 2 again. So we understand what Moses was teaching us. Read it. The book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 2. Mm -hmm. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So Moses was looking at the full moon and pointing at it. He says, you Israelites, look at this moon right here. You see this moon that is full right here? This will, mark, this will tell you this now how you tell the beginning of your month. And this particular moon that we're looking at marks the beginning of the year because that's when we came, what that's what? That's when uh, we're going to come, that's the month that we, we were going to come out of Egypt. You understand? Because we're still in Egypt during this time. So Moses is telling us, listen, what the moon that you see outside, you understand, is full right there. This marks the beginning of your month. And this particular moon marks the beginning of your year which is the first month or the first moon of the year. In Deuteronomy 16, the name was given to that first month of the year called Abib. You understand? Not January. No. So, uh, Brother Hegai, get the, get the definition of Abib in the John Seven Coffee Bible Dictionary so we know when Abib is. Okay? Abib. So let's get that real quick so we understand that. Because I know there's some new people up in here. So they must learn and understand. Take note. Okay, take note. Understand that. So the reason why we're going over this is so you can understand when the Passover takes place. So that next time you'll know how to observe it. We do have a calendar on our website where you can know the feast days that are coming up. So go over, go to the website, go to the High Holy Days calendar. You'll see all the feast days that are upcoming. So you can prepare yourself. You understand? Okay. So, um, Brother Hegai, send that thing to me. Sir. Okay. So now, go back to Leviticus. Leviticus 23, read five, verse 5 and 6 again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 5. In mm. the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. He says, the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Okay. So, now, what we need to understand is that, remember, the full moon marks the first month, the first day of the month, meaning the first of the month. When you see a full moon outside, then guess what? It's the first month, is the first day of the, of the month. 
is the first day of the month. Now, from the full moon, we're going to count how many days? We count 14 days. From the day the moon is full, we count 14 days. You understand? That's how we count. So the 14th day, like you see now, the people, um, our people are going to be celebrating Easter. They say it's on the 14th and now around the 14th, 15th and all that. They are using the black moon. They are not using the full moon calendar. You understand? They are not using the full moon according to the Bible. They're just counting using Esau's calendar because Esau doesn't use the moon. We use the moon. We use the full moon according to our God commanded us. That's how we arrived on the 14th day based on what the most High God commanded us according to the cycle, the cycle of the moon. From the full moon, you count 14 days, then you land on the Passover. Okay? So now, read that again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 5. In the 14th day of the mm -hmm. first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Is the Lord's Passover. Come on. And on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven bread. days you must eat unleavened bread. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. So now, because what we're reading here in Leviticus, you might think that the Passover and the feast of unleavened bread are two different things. No, they are not. And I'm going to show you that. Okay, let me share my screen. So go back to Deuteronomy chapter 16 now, verse 1. Because Deuteronomy 16 verse 1 tells us uh, the name that was given to the first month of the year during that time. Okay, watch this. Read that. Deuteronomy 16 verse 1. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 1. Yes. Observe the month of Abib and keep mm -hmm. the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Abib, the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. So we left by night. So the month of Abib, that's when we kept the Passover. When what day was that? The 14th day at Eve. Okay. So now the month of Abib. Let's get the definition. So what are you reading from? Reading from the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Page 13. Uh-huh. Definition of Abib. Abib, an ear of corn. Mm -hmm. The pre-exilic name for the first month of the year. For the what now? The pre-exilic name for the first month of the year. The pre-exilic name for the first month of the year. So Abib, they gave, Abib was given to the first month of the year. Go ahead. After the exile, read. After the exile, the name was changed to Nisan. Mm -hmm. It fell about the time of our March and early April. When, when, when does Abib take place? It fell about the time of our March and early April. It fell, the, it says it fell about the time of our March and early April. So end of March, you know, towards the end of March, beginning April, depending on the moon cycle. You understand? Depending on when the moon was full and we count 14 days, when we, in the same month, we observe the feast of the Passover. You understand? So right now, we are in the first month of the year. The first month of the year is not January. No, no. It's towards the it's end of March, beginning April. That's the first month of the year. You understand? Not January, which is named after Janus. You understand? A Greek idol or a Greek god. Now, now that we understand that, okay, let's go back to Leviticus, okay? Leviticus 23, read verse 5 and 6 again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 5. In the 14th day Come of on. the first month, at even is the Lord's Passover. Really? And on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread mm -hmm. unto the Lord. Seven days he must eat unleavened bread. Come on. In the so first now day. Says on the 14th day. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. I just want five and six. He says, in the 14th day of the first month at even, the first month at even, the 14th day at even is the Lord's Passover. So that means the 14th day at even, because it's verse, verse, verse 6 says, and on the 15th day on, of 
the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. So the 14th day at even begins the 15th day. Let me say that again. The 14th day at even began the 15th day. That's why it says, in the 14th day of the first month at even. Verse 6 says, on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So the 14th day at evening begins the 15th day. Give me that in Genesis 1 and 5. Genesis chapter 1, verse 5. Because we need to understand when a new day begins. Okay? Read that. The book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 5. And okay. God called the light day, and the darkness he calls night. And the evening and the morning were mm -hmm. the first day. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So the, the day begins when? At evening. The day begins at evening. Not after midnight. You understand? A new day begins when the sun goes down. At evening. So go back to Leviticus 23. Read verse 5 and 6 together again. So we understand what Moses is explaining here. Okay, go back. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 5. In the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. And on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days he must eat unleavened bread. You see that thing? So what Moses is telling us is that the 14th day at even begins the 15th day according to Genesis 1 and 5. How we count the days. You understand? So that nobody gets confused. Another thing also is that here the way that Moses is written it, that's why the Bible must be read precept upon precept, line upon line, here little and there little. Now give me the book of give me Luke 22, verse 1. So we understand that the feast of unleavened bread is the feast of the Passover, it's the same thing. Okay. Luke 22, read verse 1. The book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 1. Now the feast of unleavened bread to nine which is called the Passover. You see that thing? So the Feast of Unleavened Bread is called the Passover. So that's what we observe. You understand? We observe the Feast of the Passover or the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So what we read, what we just read in Acts 12, because I know some of you forgot already. We were in the book of Acts chapter 12, verse 3. You understand? Because it says, when he was about, he apprehended the Apostle Peter, because it says, then was the day, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So I'm going over the Feast of Unleavened Bread right now. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 1. You're going to read down. Deuteronomy 16, verse 1. Go back there. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verse 1. Come on. Observe the month of Abib, and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Abib, mm -hmm. the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. Thou shalt, thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover unto the Lord thy God of the flock and, of, and the herd in the place which the Lord shall choose to place his name there. Go ahead. Thou shalt eat no, un, thou shalt eat no leavened bread with it. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread therewith. Even the bread of affliction for thou comest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste, that thou mayest remember mm -hmm. the day when thou comest forth out of the land of Egypt all the days of thy life. So now he's teaching us that we must remember the feast of the Passover. You understand? You see, so the way that when we eat, the, when we celebrate the feast of the Passover, the first night of the, of the Passover, we eat lamb, we eat bitter herbs, we eat unleavened bread. And the rest of the week of the seven days, we're going to be eating unleavened bread. You understand? There must not be bread that was made with yeast in your house. Nothing of yeast. You understand? Nothing that has yeast must be in your house that you eat. Must not be in the house for those seven days. Okay, come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verse 4. And there shall be no leavened bread seen with thee in all thy coast seven days. Neither shall there anything of the flesh which thou sacrificest the first day at even remain all night until the morning. So it says, which thou sacrifice the first day at even 
remain all night until the morning. What is this talking about? This talk about the lamb, the Passover lamb or the goat. The Passover lamb or the goat must what? The first night, the night of the Passover, the meat must be finished. There must not be left anything, you understand, until the morning. So that by the time the sun goes up, no, there must not be meat left. Everything must be eaten, meaning in terms of meat. There must not be meat left. You understand? That's the law. Okay, and that's how we observe it on it every year. Now, watch this. So I just explained to you the feast of unleavened bread. Okay, get Exodus 12. So let's get that. Let's get some more on there. The feast of unleavened bread, because our people know how to celebrate Easter. They have no idea how to celebrate the feast of the Passover. That's why we're going over it now. Exodus 12. Okay, Exodus chapter 12, verse 1. We're going to read it down. Come on. The book of Exodus chapter 12, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Wait. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. Stop right there. It says, in the tenth day of this month, they shall take to every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. So guess what? Remember, the first day of the month, that's when the moon is full. Then you count, you count up to ten days. On the tenth day, it says what? You must prepare the lamb or the goat. You must put it in your house. That's the same thing we did. You understand? So guess what? What happens next? Go ahead. If that lamb must be in the house on the 10th day. Then on the 14th day, we kill the Passover, meaning the lamb or the goat. Okay, come on. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Wait. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A male of the first year. He shall take it out from the Come sheep on. or from the goats. So now the, the Passover meat can either be goat or lamb. Not chicken, not bura board, no, 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 no. Not, not ham, not, uh, not viana, no, 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 no. Not lucky star, no. Lamb or goat. You understand? Don't bring scope on that day. Mm -mm. Read that verse again. Verse 5. The book of Exodus chapter 12 is 5. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. You shall take it from the sheep or from the goats. Not, uh, not Easter egg, not a bunny rabbit, not chocolate that is shaped in not, not a chocolate that is shaped into a bunny rabbit either. You understand? Not mushroom shawm that they buy good shoko and that they say Easter eggs. And, mm -mm, you don't see Easter egg here. He says lamb or goat. Okay, go ahead. And you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. You see that thing? So then on the 14th day, he says you shall kill it. The 14th day at even, meaning at night, which begins the 15th day, he says you shall kill the Passover, the lamb or the goat. And the Lord is going to tell you how to prepare it. Even. He's going to tell you how to cook it. Watch this. Read on. And they shall take off the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. Wait. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roasted with fire, mm -hmm. and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. You see, the most High God, verse 8, is letting you know how you must eat, the, how we must prepare the meat. He says what? You shall eat the flesh in that night. He says, roast with fire, meaning you must fry it. You must put it on the grill outside. We fry. Okay? It says what? It says you must roast with fire. And eat with unleavened bread, meaning bread without yeast, and with bitter herbs, 
not lettuce. Lettuce is not bitter. Okay? Cucumber is not bitter. You must get something like coriander. You must get something like mint. You understand? You must get these bitter herbs. The Lord says get bitter herbs so that when you eat it, your face can be screwed up. You understand? To remember the bitter bondage that we experienced in Egypt for 400 years. Read the verse again, verse 8. The book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And you shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Go ahead. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden mm -hmm. at all with water, but roast with fire. His, his head and his with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. You see that thing? So the most that God is telling you, roast it with fire, he's mentioning it twice, as says, don't cook it with water, roast it with fire. Read verse 10. And he shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. Meaning the lamb. The Passover lamb or goat must not be, there must no meat be left in the morning. When the sun before, when the sun goes out, there must not be meat remaining. Everything must be eaten. Okay, go ahead. And that which remaineth of it until the morning, he shall burn with fire. You see that thing? You don't eat that. Go ahead, verse 11. And thus shall you eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. No, no, it's the Lord. It's Easter. It's Easter. It is the Lord's Passover. No, Good Friday. It is the Lord's Passover. It is the Lord's Passover. So you're not going to find where the most High God says celebrate Easter, Ash Wednesday, or Good Friday, or Resurrection Sunday. You will never find it in the Bible because that's not biblical. You understand? That is not biblical. Now, let's go back. Let's go back to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 12. Read verse 3 again because that's where we were. Acts 12 verse 3. Read that. The book of Acts, chapter 12, verse 3. Come and on. because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Then were the days of unleavened bread. So we're observing the feast of unleavened bread during this time when Herod was persecuting the church. You understand? And guess what? He was persecuting, persecuting the church, but he was following the examples of our forefathers that was killing the followers of Christ. You see that thing? Go ahead. Verse 4. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him. Quaternions. He, he delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him. A quaternion is talking about a set of four. A set of four soldiers to what? To keep him. Read that again. Verse 4. The book of Acts, chapter 12, verse 4. And when he apprehended mm -hmm. him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him. Mm -hmm. Intending after Easter Come to on. bring him forth to the people. In, he says what? Intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Because remember, he said, okay, I'm going to put him in prison. I'm gonna, he's going to celebrate his pagan custom his pagan hell day called Easter. After he celebrates his pagan custom, he was going to bring the apostle Peter forth before the people. Meaning what? Publicly. He wanted to publicly execute the apostle Peter to put doubt in the followers of Christ. The true followers of Christ. So he wanted to do it publicly. He wanted to do a public execution of the apostle Peter after he celebrated what? Easter. That's why it says to bring him forth to the people. They wanted to do it publicly. So that those that looked up to the Apostle Peter as the leaders, if the Apostle Peter denounced Christ before the people, then those that follow him, that follow what the Apostle Peter is teaching, they're also going to what? They're going to denounce or renounce the true gospel of Christ. Understand that. Understand that thing. So what happened back then is going to happen again. Understand. Understand. Just you need to prepare yourself, okay? That's why these classes are about. Now, 
Um, because this is the only time in the Bible where you're going to find the way to Easter. So while we're celebrating the Passover, you understand? That's why it says, intending after Easter. Intending after Easter. The reason why they inserted Easter there is what? Some, some Bible translations, actually, some Bible translations, they don't say Easter, they say Passover. You understand? But it's supposed to say after the Passover because we were celebrating Passover, not Easter. We were celebrating the Passover. But guess what? Rome, the Romans were celebrating what? Easter. That's why the trans during the translation, when they made this translation, they included Easter here. So that we, we know in these last days that actually they were celebrating their pagan custom while we were celebrating our high holiday that the Lord ordained for us to observe. You understand? Now, let's get into that. Easter. Okay, let's get into that thing. Give me the book of Esther, chapter 2, verse 7. Esther 2, verse 7. Because the word Easter, you understand, is actually the name Esther. Watch this. Esther, chapter 2, verse 7. Read what you got. The book of Esther, chapter 2, verse 7. Come on. And he brought up Hadassah, that is, Esther, his uncle's daughter. For she had neither father nor mother. And the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. You see what happened during the time of the, the Persian Empire? When we were slaves under the Persians, which is the East Indians of today, you understand? So guess what? This is around 539 BC on us or on down. Guess what? They gave our foremother her death land. They gave a new name in captivity. They named it Easter, meaning Esther, after what? Ishtar, after Ashtoreth. You understand? So Easter actually is the same name as Ashtoreth, Ashtoreth, or Ishtar, after in the honor of a Babylonian goddess, the goddess of fertility, Inanna, the queen of heaven, the goddess of sex. So they named our foremother after that goddess of sex, when we were slaves in Persia. Read that again, verse 7, so we understand what's going on here. Come on. The book of Esther, chapter 2, verse 7. Wait. Brought up Hadessa, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father when? and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. For our foremother had death, you understand? Because the most that God didn't give her name Esther. No, she was named Hadessa. But when we were slaves under the, the Persians, they gave a new name to name her uh, to name her after what? To, to name her after a Babylonian goddess. Forget the goddess of sex. Easter, meaning Esther. Okay, watch this. Let me share my screen real quick. Okay, I'm going to share this uh, dictionary right here. This dictionary right here, let me just go up to the name of the book. This dictionary is called, uh, read that, so does that mean? Reading from Vine's complete expository dictionary of Old and New Testament words. You see that thing of all a New Testament word. Who's the author? Read. By W. E. Vine. By W. E. Vine. By W. E. Vine. When was it published? Published in 1940. It was published in, the, in 1940. So let's go to page seven. 786. I believe that's where we Yep, that's it right there, 786. Now I want you to read that, the definition of Easter. Easter, where our, our foremother Esther was named after Easter, which is named after an ancient Babylonian, an ancient Kushite, an ancient Neo-Babylonian goddess called Ashtoreth. I'm going to go into that history in a little bit. Now read that for me. Page 784, Easter. Uh-huh. Come on. Pashka. Mistranslated Easter in Acts 12, verse 4. 
KJV denotes the Passover. Okay, so hold on. It says Pascha, mistranslated Easter in Acts chapter 12, verse 4 in the KJV Bible. Go ahead. Denotes the Passover. Denotes? Denotes the Passover. Come on. The phrase after the Passover signifies after the whole festival was at an end. You see that thing? It says the phrase after the Passover signifies after the whole festival was at end. Was at an end. Meaning what? Talking about the feast of the Passover that we were observing. The reason why Easter is included in there is to is to let us know that they were celebrating their their the the Good Friday or Easter, their pagan custom, while we were celebrating our high holiday, the Passover. You understand? Go ahead. The term Easter is not a, is not of Christian origin. It is another form of Astarte. One of yes, the titles. The Easter. Hold on. The definition of Easter, according to Vine's dictionary. Uh -huh. Pascha mistranslated. Pascha. Uh -huh. Mistranslated Wait. Easter in Acts chapter 12, verse 4, KJV. Denotes the Passover. Go ahead. The phrase after the Passover signifies after the whole festival was at an end. Wait. The term Easter is not of Christian origin. Stop right there. Is that the term Easter is not of Christian origin, meaning what? It's talking about the, 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 the real Christians of the Bible, the children of Israel that followed God's commandment in the faith of Christ. It says, the apostles, they never taught anything about Easter, neither did they celebrate Easter. You understand? Neither did they teach their children Easter. They never taught nothing about them. That's why it says the term Easter is not of Christian origin. Now watch this. Hold this. Give me the book. Give me Acts chapter 24. Acts 24 verse 5. Read that for me. Acts 24 verse 5. Wait. For we have found this man, a pestilent fellow, and a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. So now they are talking about the Apostle Paul. It is the Apostle Paul, meaning what? The scribes and Pharisees, those who hated Christ and hated the Apostles for following Christ. It says what? What did they call the Apostle Paul? Read verse 5 again. Acts chapter 24, verse 5. For we have found this man, a pestilent fellow, and the mover of Sergei, among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ring leader of the sect of the Nazarenes. So now the Apostle Paul, they refer to the Apostle Paul as a pestilent fellow. You understand? He says he was what, a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world because of what they were teaching, like what we are teaching now. And a ring leader of the sect of the Nazarenes. The Nazarenes is talking about the true Christians. And those two Christians, the Apostles, you understand? They never taught Easter. That's what we're reading here says the term Easter is not of Christian origin because the true Christians, they never taught Easter. Just like we are not teaching Easter. You understand? Now give me Acts chapter 11, verse 26. It says the sect of the Nazarenes. Okay? So guess what they was called? That sect of the Nazarenes. Acts chapter 11, verse 26. Read that. Acts chapter 11, verse 26. And when he had found him, Wait. he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that the whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. He said the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch, meaning in Greece. So guess what? They, that sect of the Nazarene, they were called Christians, okay? 
So they never taught Eve our forefathers, just like we are not teaching Eve. The so-called Christians in the Christian church that worship white Jesus, those are not the true Christians of the Bible. Our people, you understand? Those are just wicked Negroes that are following pagan customs. Okay, let's go back to that to the dictionary now. The term Easter, read that part again. The term Easter is not of Christian origin. Go ahead. It is another form of Astarte, on. one of the titles of the Chaldean goddess, the queen of heaven. You see that thing? It says that it is another form of Astarte, one of the titles of the Chaldean goddess, the queen of heaven. So guess what? So the term Easter, which is our foremother was named after, Easter meaning Easter or Astarte. Guess what? It says one of the titles of the Chaldean goddess, the queen of heaven. So our foremother Esther, our foremother Hedessa was named after the queen of heaven, Astarte or Ishtar, which is today called Easter. But it's all going back to what is all going back to Babylonian goddess, Ishtar, the queen of heaven. You understand? So now, watch this. Give me... Give me the book of First Samuel, chapter 7, verse 3. Okay. Let's see. In ancient times, what was um, Easter or Astarte? What was, it, what was she called? You understand? Easter, Astarte. What was she called in ancient times? Give me that in First Samuel 7, verse 3. Okay. We read this all the time. So let's read it. First Samuel, chapter 7, verse 3. Go ahead. And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, if you do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away mm. the strange gods and Astaroth from among you. And what? And Astaroth from among you. And Astaroth from among you. So Astaroth is a strange god. So the Lord says we must put Astaroth from among us. Okay, come on. And prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only. And he will deliver you. Really? Out of the hand of the Philistines. Go ahead. Then the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Astaroth and served the Lord only. You see that thing is that then the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Astaroth and served the Lord only because we wasn't serving the Lord even. We were serving these wicked demonic idols of these the Canaanites and the Philistines. Astaroth, you understand? Ashtoreth is Astarte. Ashtoreth is Astarte, which is where the word Esther comes from. Our foremother Esther was named after Ashtoreth. Give me that in 1 Samuel chapter 12 now, verse 10. 1 Samuel 12, verse 10. Read that. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 10. Come on. And they cried unto the Lord and said, We have sinned because we have forsaken the Lord and have served Balaam and Astaroth. Mm -hmm. But now deliver us out of the hand of our enemies, and we will serve thee. You see that thing? So now it says, guess what? We were still doing the same thing. We still did the same thing we just read in 1 Samuel 7. It says, and have served Balaam, which is Baal, which goes back to Nimrod, and Astaroth, which goes back to Semiramis, the queen of heaven. You understand? It says what? But now deliver us out of the hand of our enemies and we will serve you. So guess what? We were worshipping Ashtoreth and Bela. They are. But the focus here is now is Ashtoreth because we are, we, are what? we are approaching this demonic hell day called Easter or Good Friday or Ash Wednesday, which has nothing to do with the Christ, has nothing to do with the Bible. So what we're reading here is what? Is what our forefathers were worshipping during that time. And Astarte or Esther or Easter, we were calling it what? Ashtoreth. Now, let's get the let's get the definition in the Zondervan Complex Bible Dictionary. Okay. Ashtoreth. Ashtoreth. Let's get that real quick. Watch this. Now I'm gonna show you something this day. Okay. Yep, that's it right there. This is in the Zondervan Complex Bible Dictionary. Let me share that. Ashtoreth, keep that name in mind. Keep that name in mind, okay? Read that. Reading from Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, page 59. Aha, uh -huh, read that one right there, this one. 
Asteros Astate. What? Asteros Astate. It is Asteros Astate. Isn't that what we just read in the in Vine, in Vine Bible Dictionary? Read that part again. Can you see the Vine, Vine Bible Dictionary? Can you see? It says the term Easter. Read that. Vine's Bible Dictionary. The term Easter is not of Christian origin. Mm -hmm. It is another form of Astarte. You see that thing? It is another form of Astarte. Who's Astarte? Ashtoros. Astarte is Ashtoros. Okay, come on. One of the titles of the Chaldean goddess, the Queen of Heaven. You see that thing? One of the titles of the Chaldean goddess, the Queen of Heaven. Okay, now let's go back. Let's go back. Read that part again, Ashtoros, in the, in the Zondervan now, Compact Bible Dictionary. Read that Ashtoros again. Reading from Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Ashtoros. Wait. Astarte. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. So Ashtoros, Astarte, Easter, Esther. It's all the same name. Okay, come on. Ashtoros is plural of Ashtoros. Ashtoros is plural of Ashtoros. So when you say asteroid, you actually bring what? You say asteroid is plural. Asteroid is singular. Go ahead. Name of any of the fertility goddesses of the ancient Near East. You see that thing of the ancient Near East. That, that goes with what? The so-called Middle East because it was called the Near East. So it says the name of any of the fertility goddesses of the ancient Near East. Watch this. Go ahead. Babylonian Easter. You see that thing? Babylonian Easter. Babylonian Easter. So Esther, Easter, Astoroth, or Astoreth is all making reference to the same idol, the goddess of fertility. Go ahead. Greek Astarte. So in Greek, during the time of the Greeks, she was called Astarte. During the time of the Persians, she was called Esther or Easter. You see that thing? Okay, come on. In Canaan, a consort of El, Beal. You see that thing? It says, in Canaan, a consort of El or Beal. Guess what? Beal is Balaam, which it goes back to Nimrod. It all goes back to Genesis 10, when Nimrod slept with his own mother and Tammuz was born, which is called the pagan Messiah. Okay? So that's the story for another day. But now, jump down to Ashtoreth now. Let's read Ashtoreth, okay? Read that, Ashtoreth. Ashtoreth, a goddess of the Canaanites, worshipped all along the sea coast from Ras Shamra. You get it. Southward through Phoenicia mm -hmm. and Philistia. You see that thing? Phoenicia and Philistia, that's the Philistines. Because guess what? Ashtoreth goes all the way back to who? Goes all the way back to Nimrod. Ham. The Hamites, they worshipped it. So the, 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 the empires that came after the fall of the first empire of Nimrod, guess what? They just adopted the pagan custom of, of Nimrod and just, they just started to give Nimrod new names. They started to give Nimrod wife or mother a new name. Semiramis during the time of Nimrod, and guess what? During the time of the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Persians, the, the Greeks, they gave a new name. Easter, Astarte, Astoroth, Astoreth, Esther. You, you see that thing? It's all the same demon. Okay? Now I want you to jump down to, jump down to this right here. Read that. Jesenius related the name Astoreth to the Persian word Sitara. Or star. Sitara. Or star. So Astoreth says, Jesenius was a scholar. It says, related the name Astoreth to the Persian, to the Persian word Sitara or star. So Astoreth or Easter or Astarte actually means star. It's a star. Read that part again, Jesenius. Jesenius related the name Astoreth to the Persian word Sitara or star. 
and connects it with Venus, the goddess of love. The other thing is that connected with Venus, the goddess of love, is a star. You understand? Because they said in the, the, the pagan right, they say when Semiramis died, which is the Nimrod's mother, and you were also his wife, it says when she died, she flew and conquered the moon. She's the moon goddess. You understand? So now I want you to see that that's a right, that's a right there. That's black de that's black devil. Read that. Ivory caring from Nimrod. Read that. Ivory caring from Nimrod of the women at the window, possibly the goddess Astoreth or Astarte. You see that thing? Possibly the goddess Astoreth or Astarte. So Astoreth, Astarte, Ista, Ishta. It's all the same thing. It all goes back to what? To when we read it in First Samuel. Where do they get it from? They get it from what? The time of Nimrod. That's why it says, Astarte is always consort with who they are, which is Nimrod. Okay? Now watch this. Now, I'm going to show you something. Give me Jeremiah 44, verse 16. You know what? Let me go back to the, let me go back to, to the dictionary. Let's finish that up. Let me go back there, because there's something I want to explain in there. Pay close attention. So go back. It says what? Vine's, Vine's dictionary. The 10 Easter, come on. Reading from Vine's dictionary. The term Easter is not of Christian origin. It is another form of Astarte, one of the titles of the Chaldean goddess, the queen of heaven. You see that thing? One of the titles of the Chaldean goddess, the queen of heaven. So during the time of Babylon, they gave a new name, the queen of heaven. You see that thing? The queen of heaven. Let's read that in the Bible. Give me Jeremiah 44, verse 15. Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 15. Read that for me. Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 15. Come on. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women mm -hmm. that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, in Pethros, answered Jeremiah, saying, So now you've got men and women, you've got the women that are burning incense unto other gods. And the black man is sitting there saying nothing. That's the same thing you see today. Today you see our, the black women going to the shop to their kids. The black men giving them money because I keep they're getting paid. Some of them getting bonuses. Guess what? They're going to all go to with their families. They're going to go to the shop. They're going to be buying clothes. They're going to be buying meat. They're going to be buying booze to celebrate what? To burn incense unto other gods. They are. Astoreth, Ishtar, the queen of heaven, Astarte. They want to bend incense unto him. That's why they want to spend all their money during this weekend that's coming. You're going to see really how demonic black people are. And that's what we're seeing here. Women in the front, men in the background supporting the whole wickedness. That's what we're reading here. This is during the time of Babylon when Jeremiah was in Egypt. Read the verse again, verse 15. Come on. Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 15. Come on. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women mm -hmm. that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, in Pethros, answered Jeremiah, saying, So Jeremiah was in Egypt because there were our forefathers that were, when Babylon came and took over, many of our forefathers, some of them, they fled into Egypt. That's why it says in the land of Egypt. Go ahead. Verse 15. What is this? As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. Now, this is the women speaking. Remember, the black man is in the background being a simp, okay? While the woman is in the front running a big black mouth with a black gum. Read. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing go forth out of our own mouth to mm. burn incense unto the queen of heaven. Stop right there. To do what now? To burn incense unto the queen of heaven. To burn incense unto the queen of heaven. Remember what we read in the Vine Dictionary. It says what? It says it was a Chaldean goddess, the queen of heaven. Because this is during the time of the Chaldean Babylon. Okay, come on. 
and to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done mm -hmm. we and our fathers our kings and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem for then had we plenty of vigorous and were well and saw no evil you see what they are saying remember Jeremiah is rebuking them in Egypt guess what they were saying listen when we were in the land of Jerusalem we did this and everything was good now we are in Egypt we're going to do the same thing so that we can, everything can be good just like it was when we were in Jerusalem. That's what they are saying here. It says, it says what? It says, we and our fathers, our kings, and our prince, our princes in the cities of Judah and in the cities of Jerusalem. It says, we did this. There was no problem. The kings was okay with it. The princes was okay with it. Our fathers was okay with it. We are okay with it. Why aren't you okay with it? That's the same thing today. You understand? Or how? All of a sudden, you just come out of nowhere because you're going to tell us or no, we mustn't celebrate Easter. Because that's what they are saying in Sharpville. The black men and black women that be passing by, they hate our God. Whenever we read the Bible, don't celebrate Easter. You see the black men be jumping up like a popcorn, defending the black woman, going into the shop to buy a bunny rabbit. Yeah, that's what's going on this day. Okay, what happened back then, is happening this day. The Bible is a true book. Keep going. But since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and to pour Stop drink right offerings. There. Hold on. Is it, but since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven, you know how they burn incense to the Queen of Heaven? They do their bride. Because I saw them today. Some of them, they are stocking up on food. Some of them are buying, they are buying, you know, uh, red meat and all that because they are going to bribe. When you be bribing and all that, that's what you're doing. You're burning incense to the queen of heaven. You're celebrating the goddess of fertility, the goddess of sex. Because what happens during these festivals? Black men and black women, they have sex. And then nine months later, many of them will be pregnant. That's why you see the queen of heaven has got multiple breasts. Because during this time, black men and black women, they are going to be sleeping with each other. Many sisters are going to fall pregnant. Nine months later, guess what's going to happen? You're going to see babies popping up. Okay. Read on. Jeremiah on. chapter 44 verse 18. But since we left off to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. He says, he says since we stopped doing that, now we study. So that's why this one day we were teaching, say, listen, don't be selling and cooking and buying on the Sabbath day. And a, a black woman passed by, and she's not a young woman, she's an older woman, old enough to be my mother. She said, so hi, so what, where, now what must we eat? How are we going to survive? That's the same thing we just did. For 24 hours, God says, don't buy, don't sell, don't cook, don't work on the Sabbath day. Friday, sundown to Saturday, sundown, you not be doing, don't cook, don't buy, don't spend your money on that day. You can spend it Saturday, sundown, which is Sunday. Then you can do whatever. You can go and cook, you can cook, you can buy, you can sell. Because it's no longer the Sabbath. But our people cannot sacrifice 24 hours just so they don't have to break the laws of God. Keep going. And when we burned incense to the Queen of Heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men? You see that thing? It says, we did this. We didn't do this without our men. We did this with our men agreeing to this. That's why today when we correct our, our people, the main ones that complain is our sisters because our sisters are saying, but the black man is right here next to me. My husband is next to me, is right here next to me. He's not saying nothing. My father is standing here right next to me. He's not saying nothing. So that's the same thing here. It says what? And did we make a cake to worship him? That's where bad days come from. Because... Be celebrating birthdays is not in the Bible. Celebrating birthdays is not our custom. It's not the customs of Israel. Okay? Understand that celebration of, of your birthday is idolatry because you want people to worship you. That's why people get upset when they don't get a birthday message. They don't get a phone call on their birthday. They get upset. You didn't wish, wish me a happy birthday. You didn't buy me a cake because you said that some of them will say, Today is my day, you understand? 
some of them they even give them a, a an off day they give them leave on their birthday to worship yourself that's idolatry that's not biblical that's why like you see today you see kids because you mothers they have now gotten their children used to celebrate his birthdays and all that when they don't get nothing even before their birthday comes they are already asking so what what, what am i going to get for my birthday what am i going to get for my birthday that's all idolatry it's all idolatry that's what we're reading here that's why we don't celebrate none of that garbage because it's not biblical that's why many of our people they die on their birthday some people get put to death some people get shot some people get stabbed and all of that. Guess what? The Most High God is judging them because that's not in the Bible. Now, let's go back to the article. I've said enough. Let's go back to the article. Let's read that thing again. Now, read that. It says what? The, the term Easter, because I want to drill this thing into your head. Read it. Reading from Vine's Dictionary. The term Come Easter on. is not of Christian origin. It is another uh -huh. form of Astarte, one of the titles of the Chaldean goddess, the queen of heaven. Now read that highlighted part, but, but was not. But was not instituted by Christ. Is that the festival of Pasch or Pascha? Read that part right there. The festival of Pasch held by Christians in post apolistic times was a continuation of the Jewish feast. It says, the festival of Pasch held by Christians in post-apostolic, post-apostolic times, meaning after the apostle, it says what? Was a continuation of the Jewish feast. So guess what? That means they added, they started to adopt pagan customs into the Christian faith, the true Christian faith, the true teachings of Christ. Okay, go ahead but was not instituted by Christ. You see that thing? So Easter was not instituted by Christ. Easter is a man-made tradition. Now give me Colossians 2, verse 8. He says it wasn't instituted by Christ. So who instituted it? The Romans, the so-called white men. They're the ones that instituted it in these last days because they got it from ancient, uh, ancient civilization that when they enslaved us, they pushed that garbage to honor. Okay. Read that for me. Colossians 2 verse 8. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. Read. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Uh -huh. After the tradition of men, after the after rudiments the of the world, after the tradition of men. So Pasch or Pascha or Easter, guess what? That's the tradition of men. Because it says post-apostolic times it says, was a continuation of the Jewish feast. Don't worry about the name Jewish there, okay? They just adding those things to make it seem like it's talking about those white bastards in our land. It's not talking about them. Keep going. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. You see that thing? That's why it says it was not instituted by Christ. Because it's after the tradition of men. This Pasch or Pascha or Easter, that's a tradition of men. After the rudiments of the world. What are the rudiments of the world? Have sex? I'm going to show you the rudiments of the world. Give me first Timothy. I mean, give me first John. I'm going to show you the rudiments of the world right here. Watch this. First John chapter 2. Read verse 15. I'm going to show you the rudiments of the world. First John chapter 2 verse 15. Come on. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You see that thing? He says, don't love the world. Don't love the world. This is the apostle John saying, don't love the world, neither the things that are in it. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So why is he saying this? He's going to tell you in the next verse. That's the rudiments of the world, the workings of the world. Whatever the world says do is always against the laws of God. Watch this. Next verse. Come on. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. Mm -hmm. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh. That's the rudiments of the world. Because the world teaches 
If it feels good, do it. You want to be a lesbian? You can do it. You want to be gay? You can do it. You want to celebrate the devil? You can do it. You want to celebrate Easter, which is celebrating the devil? You can do it. That's the lust of the flesh. You understand? You want to have sex with any man that you need? You want to have sex with any woman? Guess what? That's the lust of the flesh. That's the rudiment of the world. You want to you wanna pleasure yourself with, uh, with equipment and all that? That's the lust of, that's the rudiment of the world. Read on. And the last of the eyes. The last of the eyes. You look at a woman, you want to have sex. You look at a man, you want to have sex. That's the last of the eyes. Read, I'm just giving that as an example. Because that's, that's the, the thing that's going to be happening when, when Easter takes place. That's what's going to happen. Black women are going to be walking around half naked. Guess what are they looking for? They are looking for, man, for a man. They are looking for a man to have sex with. Some of them are going to have orgies. Some of them are going to have three sons. That's what's going to happen on that day because what? They are celebrating the goddess of sex, the goddess of fertility, the goddess of sexual immorality, Astarte, Ishtar. Go ahead. And the pride of life going against the laws of God, right? Is not of the Father, but is of the world. You see that thing? Is not of the Father, but is of the world. So that's what we really need. That's what the Lord, the Lord is telling us, listen, the rudiments of the world, they are not after the Father, but after the world. The love of the Father is not in there. You understand? What is the love of the Father? God's commandment. So go back to Colossians 2 verse 8. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. Beware, mm -hmm. lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Easter is a philosophy. Good Friday is a philosophy. Resurrection Sunday, that's the philosophy of men. Read. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. And not after Christ. Give me, give me first John chapter 4. John, first John chapter 4, verse 4. Watch this. You know what? Yeah, read verse 4. First John chapter 4, verse 4. Watch this. First John chapter 4, verse 4. Mm hmm Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So greater is he that is in us. Who's in us? Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah, than he that is in the world, because Satan is the one that's ruling this earth. We know? They are of the world. Therefore, speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. You see that thing? That's the rudiment of the world. It says they are of the world. Meaning our people that are celebrating Easter, Good Friday, Ash Wednesday, Resurrection Sunday, they are of the world. So it says, therefore speak they of the world. That's why they speak about that day. They speak about uh, Easter, Good Friday, Ash Wednesday, Resurrection Sunday. That's why they speak of the world. Go ahead. And the world does what? And the world heareth them. And the world heareth them. The world will hear them because, guess what? They speak in the things of the world, not the things of the most high. They speak the things of the world. Watch this. Read. Okay, First John chapter 4, read verse 6. First John chapter 4, verse 6. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. Mm -hmm. He that is not of God heareth not us. It says, they that are not of God, they are not going to hear you because you be coming with the Bible. They want to be saying, listen, me, I want to celebrate Easter. Me, I want to go and celebrate this life because I'm drunk in it. That's why he says, um, ye that is not of God, heareth not us. They're not going to hear you, what you say, because they are not of God. All this, give me John 4, give me John 8. They are not of God. He's going to tell you who they are of. John chapter 8. Read verse 47 for me. Because you coming with the Bible, you understand? That's why it says they are not going to hear you.